So what is emotional trauma? No, so it's an experience producing physical symptoms, pain, depression, anxiety, emotional fixations. You almost feel in your body. The body often associates traumatic events, rape, breakup, death, with an emotion or emotions. Fear, sadness, grief, all the above, which is called PTSD. Oftentimes, the event is so severe that you remember the event as a defense mechanism. So in your brain, your reticular activating system is now hypervigilant. So you never repeat the occurrence again. So this phenomenon is known as fixation of emotion. So Hillinger observed that many of us unconsciously take on destructive familial patterns of anxiety, depression, anger, guilt, aloneness, alcoholism, and even illness as a way of quote, belonging to our families. Bonded by a deep love, a child will often sacrifice his own best interests in a vain attempt to ease the suffering of a parent or other family member. How long does that last? You know, so now 20 years later, you, know, you grow up. You don't really need these defense mechanisms anymore. You don't know how to turn it off. And that's because emotions have no expiration date. It's as if the emotion has been affixed to that particular event, and every time you think about the event, consciously or subconsciously, more often, that emotion happens. Researchers took two groups of mice and created a fear to orders by zapping their feet in an electric cage every time they blew scented air into their cages. The experimental group then became afraid of the cherry blossom smell. So after three days, just three days of fear conditioning, the cherry blossom mice were produced, and their offspring, having grown to adulthood, which were never zapped, have a higher sensitivity and were reactive to the smell of cherry blossoms. So the findings were also verified by comparing epigenetic markers on the DNA of sperm, specifically on the gene responsible for detecting the cherry blossoms of these mice. On the sperm of the cherry blossom fearing mice, there was less of the methylation that can silence these genes, possibly pointing to a mechanism of how the information got passed down at this point. Now, we have some cases in, in humans. PTSD mothers have children with higher sympathetic activation systems. So what that means is that children of mothers who themselves have a history of childhood physical and emotional abuse have a higher dark enhanced startle reflex. They get startled a lot easier. It takes a lot less stimulus for them to jump back. According to the CDC, adverse childhood experiences are vastly more common than recognized and acknowledged and are one of the leading, if not the leading, determinant of the health and social well-being of our nation. These childhood experiences had a powerful correlation to adult health a half century later. No expiration. Half century later, it's still there. Let's talk about the, oh, this is startle reflex. What is it? Here, so I'm going to show you exactly what it is. It's the startle. It's like we're looking up and we're holding our breath. What is the emotional trauma release technique? Unwinding a startle reflex. The startle reflex is the bridge that I discovered that connects external traumas and how you internalize it in your body. Emotional trauma release, that's the unwinding. So while we have some studies here that's showing that unexpected shock and traumas and their role in the genesis of disease and cancer, Dr. Wright, uh, Wright Green and Hammer discovered that not only cancer, but all diseases are triggered by unexpected shock and trauma. He proposed that cancer stems from emotional, psychic causes that remain unresolved over long periods of time. According to Dr. Hammer's observations, the body is able to heal itself most cancers, if the patient is given therapy and support for deprogramming and releasing the harmful effects of shock conflict on their body. So ETRT effectively addresses the issue of fixations of emotions held within the body. And it neutralizes the startle reflex. The end product is a more neurologically integrated and a healthier person. The emotional trauma release technique is a natural healing procedure that disconnects your behavioral reaction from a traumatic event. I'm going to talk about three types of trauma that I've discovered. There's shock trauma, and there's emotional trauma. I'll make that distinction. So emotional trauma is, is I think, with all of those feelings, 
uh, sadness and depression, all anxiety, all these things that you can put a word on. And shock trauma is just like that, that balloon popping behind you, the shock of a two, you know, a car accident. Just like the impact of energy is shock trauma. There's shock trauma, there's emotional trauma, and there's the mix. You know, some people say, oh, I, I just like feel lighter. You know, we are releasing energy that your body, your body has to store these traumas. You can store it sort of in your energetic field, in your etheric field. Wherever it stores it, it takes energy to keep it stored. Because, you know, if we, if we didn't store these traumas, we'd just be crying all day long to all of our traumas, but we need to get on with life. Or, but it takes energy to keep these things stored. And by releasing it, then we have this extra burst of energy for our vitality, for helping all of our other systems. Think of a painful memory in your past, and I want you to rate it from a scale from zero to unbearable. So zero to 10, and then remember that or write that number down. So thinking about that idea, I want you to take a breath, take a breath in, and tilt your head back. Exhale, let it go. The same thing with your eyes closed. And if your eyes were closed, then open your eyes now. So do the same thing. Exhale. We're going to repeat that exact process, just tap your heart chakra simultaneously. So take a breath in, take your head back with your eyes open, tap your heart chakra, exhale, let it go. And the same thing with your eyes closed. Exhale. So check back in with yourselves. I want you to re-rate that traumatic event you had in your life. Is it lower? Raise your hand. So I got out. I'm not sure if all of you raise your hand, but it's about 40% of the room. I think that's pretty good for about a minute.